Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks very much for traveling in so far, particularly today. It's a great day for us in Discover Science and Engineering, the 14th year of Science Week Ireland. And this is the first in a lecture series this week here at the Science Gallery, which if you haven't been here before, maybe another day you might come in and uh, have a look around. A very interesting place indeed. But obviously you're all in science, so that's why you're here. <laughs> a bit of an open question, sorry about that. Um, I'd, I'd particularly like to congratulate, of course, your teachers for bringing you. That's the important thing, isn't it? Um, you're very welcome, as I say. Um, this is, as I said, the first of a series of lectures uh, during Science Week. That is 400 events this week all over Ireland, organized by my colleague, I don't know where she's gone, uh, Cathy Foley, uh, 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 who has a lot of work to do, as you can imagine. So uh, let's make this a particularly good lecture series in that we've got a really interesting person here today, uh, Domini Kumar, who is a really intelligent uh, and clever person. Um, she's the director in Maynooth University of Product Design. And that goes back, I suppose, to her winning the British, the UK prize to being the, what is it, the most innovative uh, young British female of the year, apologies, 2001. So you can imagine an important person. She's an engineer, like myself, uh, but she's more qualified than I am, to say the least. She's got a, a master's in product design, and she's also got a, a master's in medical science. So she's uh, a very uh, bright and exciting person as well. She's also invented uh, uh, a few things, but particularly a drip-free teapot. So there you go. So there's quite a lot of innovations that you can make out there. So this is important for this, this, this week because it's all about innovation and creativity. And Domani is the European Union's uh, representative for innovation and creativity because it's the year of innovation and creativity. So we've got the right person to kick off Science Week Ireland's lecture series here at the Science Gallery. So I'm going to hand over to her, and she'll be talking to you for about 40 minutes, and then there's some, some uh, opportunities for questions and answers. So think up the questions. Uh, they don't all have to be about teapots, by the way. <laughs> and enjoy the rest of the week, and can I hand you over to Dominic Kumar. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Um, Peter's now taken away about 10 of my slides on what I was going to speak about, my background and stuff. But basically today I'm here to talk about design, creativity and in innovation, how it fits in um, to science, engineering, all the disciplines. And it's very exciting, the first day of Science Week today. So welcome all. So just to give you a bit of background, obviously um, Peter said a bit, there's me with my funky teapots many years ago. But um, at, school, at school, it was my lifelong ambition to become an inventor. So I was told that around your age at school that I couldn't go off and do a degree in inventing. So the nearest thing I could get to it would be mechanical engineering. So I studied mechanical engineering. I then went on. I realized that my actual interest was in design, creating new products. Um, new innovations, new inventions. So I went on to do an MSc in product design. Um, very hands-on, very practical, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail. Then I went on recently in Ireland. I moved to Ireland six years ago, and I've been working here um, in universities and in industry. But I did a master's in medical subject. And basically, what I did for this um, MSc is I was inventing a suit that people could wear and it would measure their movements by this suit. So it had sensors built into this um, suit. If you imagine if you're in hospital and um, you've had a stroke or you're in rehabilitation and you're, mo you're, you're moving your arm slowly every day, but no one can actually monitor how far you're moving your arm or if it's getting better or if it's getting worse. Or if you're at home with a, um, an illness, the same thing applies. So basically I invented this medical suit that you could wear with sensors built in um, that would talk to a com computer and measure your movement every day and give you feedback. And it was to do with yoga as well, the movement of the joints with yoga. Um, that was my recent master's, but in between both my master's, I worked in industry for about 10 years. 
So Habitat, which used to be an island, I don't know if you remember the shop Habitat, it's now left island, but it's still in Europe. Um, so I worked for the likes of Habitat and other companies designing real products. And how it used to work is they'd come up to you and say, right, we need a new um, juicer for our shops. And you'd go off in your design team, you'd see what juices were out there, consumer products, household products is my particular field, and you'd go off and design it. You, I, I'll go through the design process in a minute and what it entails, but designing new products um, for the shops. And then most recently, I'm now at a university. I'm in the National University of Island Maynooth. I'm um, the programme director for the product design degree, which is a Bachelor of Science Honours degree. And the degree's new, it's three years old. So again, I'm designing the degree to try and make it the best design degree I can in product design. So I'll talk about that process as well. I'll talk about the Imaginet competition. And um, January this year, the European Union announced this year to be the European Year of Creativity and Innovation. They believe that creativity and innovation is what's important in the future. New products, new innovations, new science, all of that is going to help us out of this recession. I'm not going to go into the economic details, but help us out of this recession and help us in the next recession if and when it comes. So with that role as the European ambassador, I basically speak around Europe, speak to different audiences. I work with the European Parliament and um, I'm my basic role is to promote creativity and innovation uh, among everyone. The other ambassadors, we're all across Europe, there's 25 of us, they're probably a lot more famous than me, so you would have heard of them. The likes of Philip Stark, who had that series, I don't know if any of you saw it on BBC Two recently, no? Okay, Edward de, um, Edward de Bono, he's another famous, but Erno Rubik, the guy who invented the Rubik's Cube. You all know Rubik's Cube, he's another ambassador. Um, the guy who invented the MP3 player uh, format in Germany. That's the reason we all have iPods and MP3 players today. So they're the other ambassadors. So just to go a bit in my path, my journey so far. So I always wanted to be an inventor. At the age of eight, I started keeping a little book of ideas of things that I wanted to see designed better or changed to make my life easier. And I'm sure you have that all the time. Everything you interact with, every product, everything you use, I'm sure at some point in the day you think, oh my God, this doesn't work properly. Why can't someone design it better? Well, I had that curiosity and right from a young age. So I had a little book of ideas, which I still have. And as I told you, the closest I could get to innovating, or I was told, was mechanical engineering. And that's what I went into. Mechanical engineering was great, but I felt constrained on the artistic side, so I went on to do product design. So now I'm going to talk about my actual invention and how I set out to do it. So I was told um, during my master's in product design, I wanted to set out to invent a new product. I wanted to be a famous inventor in the UK, in London. And someone came up to me and said to me, if you invent a non-drip teapot, you'll make it. And I was like, really? A non-drip teapot? Is that really a problem for, for people? And the more I researched it, the more I realized that actually, for the last 50 years, there's been scientists, engineers, and designers trying to solve the problem of dripping teapots. I don't know how many of you use teapots, how many of your families do, but actually, um, wherever you go, you'll find they'll drip whether you're on a train, at home, no matter, you can pour it in a special way, which I'm obviously perfect at doing, but they drip, they spill, they ruin the tablecloth, they get hot liquid onto you. So I set out to do it. How did I go about it? I spent three months on this project, and to be honest, a lot of design and invention and innovation is to be practical. So you, can, you need the theory, you need the maths, you need the science, you need, you need to know what's behind, like, I did all the maths and all the science, but that was in the evenings. In the daytime, I was working in a pottery, a little pottery in London Bridge, in the centre of London, with a clockmaker who made ceramic clocks, and I was actually doing design, make and test projects. So I had, I was building teapots with my hands, with crazy spouts, some of them just like 
any shape that came into my head, I would make the spout that shape and test it and see, did it drip more, did it drip less, was it any good, or was it worse? And I had about 12 different prototypes. Um, they were actually all sitting in London. And if you see the spout shapes on them, they're all weird and wacky designs. But it was just to be practical, to get to know how something works and what it's doing. Obviously, you need the science and maths. You need to understand it. But I believe all innovation, all invention, comes from being practical and design making and testing. So um, I set out to do it. And together with the science and maths and all my crazy shaped spouts and teapots, I realized I'd hit on the solution that if here, you can see in this picture, you can see the groove on the underside of the spout. So basically, what it is, is if you see the spout there, with that groove on the outside, that tiny shape change, the spout's becoming narrower. You can see that as it's coming up, it's, getting, it's becoming narrower. As you're pouring, as you're tipping this teapot, and the spout's becoming narrower, it's speeding up um, the fluid inside. So if you're pouring, it's becoming narrower, it's speeding up the fluid inside. As you tip back, or as it's basically liquid works in a way that the faster it is, the less likely it is to drip. So if you're speeding up the fluid, you're going to actually prevent the dripping from that simple shape change on the underneath, on the underside of a spout. Not only that, because of the shape change that it is, a little upside down V, you can imagine on the inside it's now got a ramp. That is actually a ramp. I, I wish I had the teapot here to show you, but if you're pouring that and um, there's a ramp on the inside, when you tip back from pouring a liquid, that ramp actually prevents any more fluid going past it. So it's working by one when you're pouring it, speeding it up. As you're tipping back, it's now got a lip on the inside, which is sending the fluid back. And that is the invention. A tiny shape change to a spout. It's not an attachment. It's not anything else. And the beauty of this upside down V is that I wanted it to be able to be mass produced. I didn't want this teapot to cost you know, 100 euro to buy, and no one could afford to buy it. I wanted it to be made, manufactured in a process that could be mass produced in the existing machinery that exists. So with ceramics, which is the, one of the hardest materials to mold, you cannot put anything on the inside of a spout because of the process of manufacturing. It has to go on the outside. So without even realizing it at the time, by creating this shape on the outside, I'd created the shape on the inside without actually having to go inside the spout. So um, totally non-drip. Obviously, I allowed for mistakes, which I'll go into. And it's a simple innovation. What was to come after this, I wasn't prepared for at all. And this, um, it's a non-drip spout, so I have a worldwide patent now. Um, and it can be applied to anything that pours. So wine bottles, petrol pumps, industrial machinery, anything that pours any liquid, on a wine bottle, this would be 360 going all the way around the lip. Anything that pours any liquid with this shape in any material can now make it completely non-drip and non-spill. Petrol pumps, you'll realize later when you're driving, it's quite annoying to get petrol on your shoes. It's a waste of petrol as well. So it's a solution to everything. So I had my eureka moment with this invention. I spent, I think, the next seven days testing it to make sure it was foolproof. And it is completely foolproof, even if there's minimal liquid in there, and the liquid can't speed up. It actually, when you pull back, you see the V now on the outside, that groove. This is the third way it works. If there is going to be one drip as you're pulling back, the, the liquid cannot speed up, because there's not enough liquid in the teapot. As you pull back, the last droplet, well, the, the fluid will start to drip, it will hit this V, which is now at an angle. Water can't go upwards. So it will come off that edge into the mug. And then as you tip back, if there is any dripping, the droplet will, will stick to that V on the outside. And I've had the likes of Unilever and other companies test this invention by hammering the top of the teapot to try and get that last droplet to come off on that V on the outside. And it can't because of surface tension. 
If you, if you put a droplet onto a V like that and the droplet's going around it, you can bang the top, but that droplet is now stuck to that V on the outside. It cannot come off. It grips onto it because of energy and surface tension. So it worked in three ways. So what came next after this? So then um, after this, the next morning I was called and I won quite a few awards. I was the Young British Female Inventor of the Year, as Peter's already said. Um, magazines, newspapers. I started to tour the world with this invention, um, to trying to promote it, and then also hit the media as well. And before I knew it, Big Breakfast, I don't think... Do, you, do any of you remember the Big Breakfast? No, it was a morning program, or GMTV, Richard and Judy, all these programs. Within the next couple of weeks, I was on live TV speaking about this invention, pouring every presenter in the UK practically a cup of tea from this teapot, proving that it wasn't dripping. You know, they made me pour it live on every TV program there was, Sky News, BBC News, and um, I, I gained a lot of media interest from it. At going back to the point where someone said to me, if you invent a teapot that doesn't drip, you will make it as an inventor. And in three months, I'd done it. At the same time, there was a professor at one of the universities who was trying to solve the, the same problem, who'd spent the last 20 years of his life trying to do it. But the difference was, he was a scientist, which was great, but he didn't use any practical element to it. So he just got caught up in all the science and math, but didn't do any practical side of it. And in science and engineering and design, you really need to have a practical side. You need to be experimenting. You need to do design, make, and test. So creativity. Everyone's talking about creativity. I don't know if they are in your schools. To try and be more creative. This is the future of Ireland, the next generation. What is creativity? Basically, to me, it can be broken down into simple language. Creativity is to be inquisitive and be curious. Start questioning things. We, we put up with so many... Product design, obviously, is my field, product design engineering, um, but we put up with so many products that we're not happy with. We're really not happy with them, but we put up with them. I heard um, this weekend someone was talking about... Does anyone know when the wheel was invented? And a long time ago. Any idea? yesterday we've got over here, but um, <laughs> apparently, well, not apparently, the wheel was invented approximately 3,000 years ago, okay? 3,000 years ago, the wheel was invented, yet only 30 years ago, some scientist, designer, engineer, whoever it was, um, realized that putting a wheel on a suitcase would be brilliant for us. So 3,000 years, and then only in the last 30 years does someone realize to put a wheel on it to make it a trolley bag, a trolley suitcase. So being creative is questioning things. It's, it's, not, it's not living with the products that you don't like or the, the science or whatever it is you're trying to create or be innovative. You've got to start questioning. And you'll find that you'll get a lot of people around you at that time saying, oh, no, that will never work. I had that during my stages of trying to invent the non-drip teapot. They would say, oh, you'll never do that. And you've, you've give, set aside three months. Impossible. Believe me, you can do anything. If you want to, if you're passionate, um, and if you put your mind to it, put the hard work, get the science and maths, learn about it, you can do anything. So you need to have an open mind as well. I'll give you examples of this. Um, to have an open mind. You need to be original. So, obviously, and be original and take risks. Here's another thing. Um, we're too afraid to take that risk. But actually, the best ideas come from failure or learning from your mistakes. Don't be scared of failure. Actually, failure is positive in the world of science, engineering, and design. It actually teaches you what doesn't work with my 12 crazy spout shapes. And if, if you could see them, you might find them on the internet. If you see these spout shapes, people will laugh 